Perkins runs about 174 acres and there are 100 homes of which 30, 30 homes are occupied year round. The desire to sewer the pond actually goes back to the 70s. When they talked about it, we did studies, but the, the prohibitive cost put it out of line. So it wasn't until 1999 that we requested by petition to put the sewer bond back onto the public ballot. And the first vote took place in 2000, and we failed the vote by a mere simple one vote. At that time, very frustrated, we immediately went back to the town and said we want to do a, a emergency action type revote. So we did that in August of 2000 and we met with a great deal of opposition from many parties around town. And being persistent, we tried it again in 2002 spring meeting and failed to even grade a degree. And that's when we decided we needed to to regroup, sit back, and find out how to how to logically go about this project. The immediate reaction was that you only fail when you give up, and Perkins Pond being the, the tiny and mighty place that it is, we weren't going to give up. It was very important to the, uh, the environmental health of the entire community. So what we ended up doing was we ended up really putting together a marketing plan. We created brochures, which we handed out at the transfer station of all places because we knew we'd hit everybody. We made ourselves available to speak at the senior center and at any functions that were around Sunapee. And people wanted to get to know us uh, and, and know us as a community and know us as individuals. So we looked at originally two different uh, course of actions to be able to uh, get to the sewer plant, which is located about two and a half miles away, uh, basically came down to a cost effectiveness to pursue the all terrain system. Because of the terrain in and around the pond, we go up and down and all over mm -hmm. the place. And they felt that this would be considerably less money to do it that way. And once they uh, talked to the folks at Underwood Engineering, they determined a very viable source and one that would uh, suit our needs here. The savings of the all-terrain over the, uh, the normal methods uh, because of the substations and all that were involved was about half the price, about 1.5 instead of the three that they were estimating for the, uh, the other route. My first encounter with FR Mahoney was uh, one day I was asked to meet with the folks down at the water treatment plant, the sewer treatment plant, uh, to meet with one of the fellows that would be providing us with the E1 system. I met with Mr. Henry Albro, and he was the first person to put his pitch forward. And those guys were great to work with. Everybody that we worked with, once they were brought in and everybody signed off, the next step was to move to getting FR Mahoney to educate the folks at Brown Industrial Group who are the ones who actually installed the system. And that was all through Henry's uh, guidance. After the easy and successful installation of the all-terrain system, we actually had a celebratory flush party where I invited over people for a cocktail party and we flushed for the very first time without having to worry about whether or not we were filling our holding tanks, whether or not we were um, leaching into the lake. I think people in the community were so excited because all of a sudden they could do the things they wanted to do with their homes and they didn't have to worry about people coming in and pumping their systems and, and on all the aggravation that goes with that.